Hello everybody, I'm Nick and in this video I want to talk about what's the most significant release version of C Sharp, not .NET, just C Sharp, the language, and I'm basing it off this Reddit post saying that for JavaScript it is ES6, massive release, completely changed how people perceive JavaScript, and then from Java it is Java 8, it had tons of features, incredible adoption, and such a massive jump from Java 7 and previous releases. So what is considered the Java 8 of C Sharp? Now, when I hear the words significant, this can mean many things, especially for a programming language. Is it about improvement on the language itself for existing developers, or is it the version that made it be adopted by more developers? Because for the JavaScript argument, the ES6 argument, well, ES6 in many ways legitimized JavaScript as an okay, decent programming language, while in Java, Java 8 just made life for existing Java developers way easier. So which one is it? I don't know. I'm going to try to pick a middle ground because I do have an opinion, but let's also see what other people have to say. And there is a history of C Sharp page in the documentation, by the way, which includes all the features added from 1.0 all the way to version 12, which is the latest current one. So let's go straight into the first comment, which is C Sharp 3. It introduced lambdas, expressions, and link. That's the first release where it came from just a Microsoft crappy, hastily built clone of Java to it's a pretty darn good language in its own right. It was also the start of a journey of C Sharp embracing functional programming ideas. I think that's true, the last point where it's just the beginning of the journey, but that journey really started, or at least it continued, after C Sharp 7. But let's take a look at what was added in C Sharp 3, right? So up until at that point, we had a very basic language. We did have generics, uh, proper generics as opposed to Java, because C Sharp did in fact just start as a Java clone. There's no way around this and we shouldn't be denying it. That was the whole point. But auto-implemented properties significantly simplify the concept of properties, anonymous types, query expressions, which is basically link, lambda expressions, expression trees, extension methods, massive, massive feature. Even now we're building on extension methods, 10 versions later with C sharp 13 and extensions, everything. Then implicit type, local types, partial methods, and object and collection initializer, some more niche features, but that was all the way back in 2007. So I totally agree with this point. This is a massive, massive release. It is not the biggest in my opinion, but the amount of features added back then that we still use every single day today just can't be denied. Link, expressions, lambdas, just to name a few, auto properties. You can't open a code base and not have any of this. It's just impossible. So I can totally see C Sharp 3 being so, so influential. Now, before I move on, I'd like to let you know that the most requested course regarding architecture is finally released on Dome Train and it's called From Zero to Hero Vertical Slice Architecture. It is one of the most popular architectural patterns and many people move from other architectures into vertical slices. So this insanely good six hour course made by a brand new author, Kevin Docs, which you might already know from his Prototype courses, is now live on Dome Train and it's going to be one of many from Kevin, which I'm very excited to have over on Dome Train. In these six hours, Kevin will take you from knowing nothing about vertical slices and he's going to teach you everything there is to know about them with practical code, examples, diagrams, and so on. It's an amazing course. I use it myself to really refresh my knowledge and adapt it for Dome Train. So Dome Train itself is using things I learned from vertical slice architecture course, which is just amazing. So to celebrate the launch, the first 400 of you can use discount code vertical20 at checkout to get 20% off. It's an amazing opportunity to get started with the topic, mainly because there isn't that much professionally made training content around there. So link below, now back to the video. But the next comment makes a very valid point, which is C Sharp 5 brought async away to us. Definitely one of the most important or significant releases. And I have to agree with that. I actually made a short some time ago where I ranked every C Sharp version and you very quickly see that I really liked C Sharp 3. It's the biggest piece of dog shit. I didn't really like C Sharp 4. And I said that 5 was the greatest of all time. Uh, and I do stand by that. I think that the fact that C Sharp 5 added a way to sync completely changed C Sharp and the programming language ecosystem in general. You have to remember the first language to ever add a sync await that way was C Sharp. It wasn't the first to introduce the concept that was F Sharp. 
in 2007, and you can even go further back in Haskell, I think, where conceptually it sort of existed, but it was an F-sharp feature that was adopted, and then with this very nice syntactic sugar of a way they sync, it really introduced asynchronous programming in C sharp, not parallel. And if you want to know more about this, there's this video from all the way back in 2012, I think, by Stephen Tobe. That is 12 years ago, and Stephen was still there being the goat on this topic. And I put a link in the description down below. Really worth a watch because you can totally understand where Microsoft was coming from, designing this feature, what it was introduced for, maybe some misconceptions, and also concern about the confusion that would come because the ultimate downfall of this feature, if it can have a downfall, is that it is so smart, so advanced, so ahead of its time that developers just couldn't wrap their head around it. And I couldn't either. The fact that you can write synchronous looking code that would be asynchronous was just out of this world for the time. Microsoft was totally ahead of the curve, and 12 years later you can see that not only C Sharp has the features, but also uh, Python, JavaScript, C++, C, Perl, Rust, Swift, and it goes on and on, TypeScript. So this feature not only changed C Sharp, but I think changed programming language in general, and it's why I think it's my personal greatest of all time release of C Sharp. C Sharp would just not be the same and programming for every developer out there wouldn't be the same without this feature. And then we have another breakdown of extremely significant versions. So C Sharp 1, okay, it was the creation of the language. I don't think the V1 of any language is ever the most significant one or the most important one because, okay, it was the one that made it exist, but nothing at release is amazing. The addition of generics in C Sharp 2 was a massive upgrade, but again, not too important. Then Link completely changed the game in C Sharp 3. They even skipped C Sharp 4 because it is a bad release. I guess after C Sharp 3, they had to take a break. Also, I'm pretty sure that C Sharp 4 added, where is it? Dynamic. Oh, that feature would just haunt me to this day, the dynamic keyword. Maybe a video on that if you want at some point, leave a comment down below and ask for it if you want. Then in C Sharp 8, which I think was a very, very big release as well, Annullable Reference Types was a very important feature, which I think people did not embrace enough. And I do feel the same about default interface methods. This is another Java feature that Microsoft brought in C Sharp. I think Annullable Reference Types should have been adopted more. I do see them quite a bit, but not as much as I would want to. And then you can see switch expressions, pattern matching being improved in here, and we see a functional programming set of features coming then constantly, like records with remutability, simplicity, init keyword, top-level statements, covariant ten types, more pattern matching, more F sharp into C sharp, let's not deny it. And then more simplification, more and more and more simplification, and then more niche features. We don't really see massive features anymore. We just see improvements, and hopefully we're gonna get a massive feature with extension, everything in C sharp 13. And eventually at some point in the future with union types, when we get it, and I do think we'll get it. And I do think that C sharp 7 does not get enough credit about the basic pattern matching it added because that was the basis of what has been built to be a very decent feature in C Sharp nowadays. I think those are the most important and unique comments on this thread. The rest is just repetition. And I do personally believe that C Sharp 5 is the greatest release of C Sharp of all time, with C Sharp 2 being a close second. I think then I would put 8 and then 7 maybe. And then eventually when we get discriminated unions, that might be one of the most important ones but we'll see. But now I want to know from you. Leave a comment down below. Let me know what is your favorite C-sharp version. Well, that's all I have for you for this video. Thank you very much for watching. And as always, keep coding.